He's doing everything he can, pulling out all stops to ensure that Putin can continue being Putin. What do I mean by that? I mean that he's all we talk about when we talk about Russia for the, virtually the past 20 years. Um, he has been the dominant, the paramount figure in Russia to the exclusion of really any other personality, including his own prime minister. He's done something similar to this before. You might even, you blink and you missed it, right? You f might forget that after two terms in 2008, Putin stepped to step down, mm -hmm. became prime minister, and had his prime minister, Dmitry Medvedev, become president briefly for four years, Putin returning to the president in 2012. He's now in his fourth presidential term, the second year of his fourth presidential term. Look, what he's doing essentially is he'll say that he's trying to enhance democracy with these constitutional reforms. Essentially, he is also ensuring that he, 2024 looms. That's when under the current constitution he has to, he, under the constitution as he wants to reform it, a president would have a limit of two terms. Mm -hmm. He's supposed to step down in 2024. He's ensuring essentially that the president, his successor, will be weaker than he was. Mm -hmm. And he's setting up a system where he's sort of figuring out, well, where can I position myself in order to, to perhaps I won't be as visible, I won't have the title of president, but I'll be behind the scenes, pulling the strings. I will still be the behind the scenes, the sort of Wizard of Oz, the mm. controller. The man calling of, the shots. Uh, exactly, <clears throat> calling the shots there. Um, he's sort of, he struck out in, in another attempt. He wanted to create a new country, absorb sort of Belarus, Belarus into Russia, and perhaps become the head of that. But Alexander Lukashenko, the president of Belarus, didn't like that idea, so that was nixed. Um, we've also seen him perhaps... Uh, well, we haven't heard him say it explicitly, maybe wanting to become prime minister. Mm -hmm. And this is interesting because under these constitutional reforms, the prime minister would become uh, a relatively stronger position, again, uh, along with parliament. The parliament would be able to choose the prime minister. He could be head of the state council. Now a body that advises the president but mm -hmm. could be newly emboldened, newly empowered under these reforms. So trying to figure out places he can park himself, where Putin can park himself post-2024, post-presidency, to see where he would still be in a position to control things and be the dominant figure, if not as visible. But why pick Mikhail? Uh, Mishustin, someone who's, you know, a relative unknown and someone who's been apolitical. As one of uh, former opposition lawmakers said, for exactly that reason, because he is a face, he embodies and personifies the faceless unambitious technocrat and bureaucrat. We've never heard of him, which is ironic because mm. you might remember uh, Boris Yeltsin uh, all of a sudden abruptly resigning on the eve of the new millennium in December 31st, 1999, and naming this unknown, obscure figure, plucking him from the remote hinterlands named Vladimir Putin. Mm. Um, I'm not going to say uh, it's not an exact parallel, but this is a faceless figure. Uh, he's been <clears throat> apparently, by all reckonings, very good at what he has been doing exactly. since 2010, which is he's been the head of the federal tax service, has overhauled that system, and he was a former IT uh, specialist as well, this new prime minister, so he digital digitalized the tax system. So he's modern thinking, he's technologically inclined, but he's a man who isn't seen as posing too much of a threat to Putin's own ambitions or to the ambitions of any uh, high-profile president to come. Mm. So he's a safe he's a safe placeholder, so to, see, so to speak. And where does this whole, you know, appointment, this reshuffle, if you will, leave the opposition in Russia? In a very interesting but unpredictable position. Yes, I am sitting on the fence, as you can see. But look, uh, Putin, his popularity still hovers around 70 percent, but that's not to say he hasn't been under enormous social and economic pressures. Uh, he's coming off unpopular uh, pension reforms, very unpopular. Incomes have been falling. Inequality has been rising. Those sanctions are still squeezing Russia's economy. Low oil pr prices are also squeezing mm -hmm. the budget. Putin has seen more and more street protests in recent months. He is very cognizant of social opinion, um, if we don't call it opposition opinion, at least the people's opinion in the streets, um, which is why his speech yesterday among announcing these reforms also gave a lot of handouts to families, yeah. uh, a lot of infrastructure projects, things to please the popular opinion in the public. He knows he has to be cognizant of that. The opposition could soon be in the ascendant again. Putin can hardly just uh, ride pretty now. He's, uh, he's, in a, he's in a difficult position. I don't think he knows exactly how this is all going to play out.